Alright guys, we're going down into the main entrance, which is a winding stairwell uh, with a large hole where the deceased bodies would have been lowered. There's actually three levels to this underground catacomb. The stairs here are extremely small. You can see the spaces between the stairs here. It's very small which makes it both easy and hard to walk down. So we're approaching the first level. Oh, here's an interesting little alcove. With a hole that who knows where it goes. My light doesn't penetrate that far. Very cool though. Yeah, three levels. Yep. All right, here we go. first of three levels, marked with uh, benches that would have allowed the mourners to sit during funeral rites. This room here, which I believe is the rotunda, um, has several exits. Let's check out this one first. So we have some areas for sarcophagi. Oh, wow. This is massive. Not a glass, a telephone, that middle shop. For a year of work. There's a stairwell that has been very much worn down. I'm not sure what's up there. I think it's just been sealed off. Over here we have a, a display of bones that were found here. This is a temple, the sacrifice of an hotel sacrificatoire, normal, large, and a rich basket, a museum, and a student. 
Back here we have a really deep area for the sarcophagus, deeper than the others that I've seen so far. This one's just massive. So you can hear uh, a tour going on in French for some of the very, very few tourists that are visiting Egypt right now. We've mostly had uh, Egyptian visitors at the sites that we've gone to. Very, very few actual foreign visitors. The scale of this catacomb is just massive. The ceilings here have to be at least 24 to 30 feet high. This area here is closed off, and unfortunately there's not going to be a good way for me to show you guys what's behind. Uh, but there's three walls here, and each wall has about 5 by 3, so 15 areas uh, for sarcophagi to have been placed in the walls. Unfortunately, it is barred off with a lock. So we cannot explore it. There's Baba taking pictures. Yeah. Sorry guys, my my light is just not very powerful for this camera. So, unfortunately, I can't show you the minute details. Um, but this room seems to have more shelving and a much larger shelf here. And here looks like it leads to another area. But. They have not continued to dig here. I don't know if that means that they've already dug and then just sealed it off, or if they just never dug here. All right, guys, so we have explored this section. Uh, so we're gonna move into another section. Like I said, these catacombs are extremely extensive. There was a map outside that I took a picture of, which you'll see at the end of the video, which just shows all of the excavated areas in this catacomb. And this is only the first floor. <laughs> There's still another two floors to go. It's a little bit uh, iffy, but I'm going to risk it. 
because that's who I am. Ooh, look at that. An area that is not at all lit and uh, contains yet more tombs. Although it used to have a light. However, it's currently not working. You can see the markings here that were left by the archaeologists, um, several of which are to catalog and match up to any bodies and artifacts that they find. Here is one of the second last alcoves for connecting pathways on this first floor, many of which are very similar to each other and serve simply as a place for the dead to be stored and for the living to possibly come visit. And some of these areas are rather treacherous. You see here that they simply placed a, a piece of wood over a large and deep hole. Definitely would not want to step on here without uh, something being in the way. <laughs> oh wow. This is definitely the most spacious of areas. And I believe this is a waiting area uh, and possibly a mourning area for the families. You can see here the remnants of an old uh, column. Uh, and then this area is all bench, all sitting area. See on the walls uh, the amount of time and energy that went into carving these spaces. You can see all the tool marks on the ceiling and on the walls. They work everything. So now we come to the one area here that has uh, steps leading down into this tomb, which obviously was somewhere that an important person was laid to rest. So we're going to head down. You'll have noticed that uh, all of the other uh, tombs were not uh, marked with any kind of writing or any art. However, this one does. In fact, it contains a lot of different parts. Oh, there's a, an area here that's, again, not been dug out. But here is where it's interesting. So the area is marked with two columns that reach up to this beautiful piece of artistry. And then, around the corner here, uh, we have two statues. There's one here, a matching twin 
on the other side. And when I say twin, I mean uh, a male and a female. And then on both sides of this entrance, we have the serpent. And more mantle art. And then finally, inside, we have still the original sarcophagi, which still remain here. And each alcove actually displays its own story. One that I can decipher because I don't know the history of it, but is nonetheless beautiful. And here we have the final alcove and sarcophagus. Well, this is interesting, I didn't notice, but behind the actual entrance. So this you would only see if you actually came in. Uh, you can see what appears to be a jackal-headed man uh, with a serpent's body, or at least lower body. And then on the other side we have another. On either side of the tomb, we have a long, shorter hallway. Shorter, I mean height. Um, that reaches all the way around where bodies would have been laid to rest. I'm not sure, this is just a hypothesis, but this may have been where... Uh, they entombed servants of the person who was buried in the center. Uh, but that is just a guess based on my own opinion and absolutely zero research. Here we have, again, an unlit hall. I assume at one point it was lit, um, but yes, here we see evidence that it was at one point lit, but for some reason or other it is no longer lit. Well, this is interesting. So in this one, it seems to be a regular um, placement for sarcophagus, however, it goes further in, which I know you guys can't quite see it, but it does go in for another, jeez, oh I can't even tell from here, which kind of makes me want to jump over and check it out. This one here is just similar to the others and ends right here. 
the other one. It's very intriguing to me. So I think I'm gonna look at it. So don't tell anyone. But I have jumped over. And I'm looking inside. And just as I suspected, it does indeed go farther in. Uh, it goes in for about, I'd say 20 feet. Um, which is interesting because the entrance here is completely sealed and would have been carved. So I don't, and I don't know how or why they would need such a deep alcove. Nonetheless, exciting and interesting. All right, so having jumped over and discovered an interesting 20 foot alcove, <laughs> An empty one, I should say, at that. We're gonna continue. And we see more here of these alcoves, areas where bodies would be put in. Including some of the ones that would directly go inside uh, behind the, the crypt. Um, with all the detail work and the artistry. So we've now made our way completely around and we're returning back to the central chamber. That is the end of the first floor. So now we're going to move further down to the second floor. See you guys in a couple of minutes.